Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're branching out with another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck and Jumpstart brought a lot of new tools to the archetype including Branching Evolution, a three-man enchantment saying if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature we control twice that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. So this can very quickly get out of hand and of course our deck is filled with plus one plus one counters synergies and getting multiple copies of branching evolution is still very good since if we have two copies of evolution we get four times as many counters three copies of evolution is eight times as many and if we get the full play set in play we get 16 times as many counters so they do scale quite nicely and then another new addition from Jumpstart is a Rishkar Pima Renegade, a 3 mana 2 2 legendary elf druid. And when Rishkar enters the battlefield, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to two target creatures, including potentially Rishkar himself. And then each creature we control with a counter on it has the ability to tap for green mana, so they all turn into mana elves. And we can potentially make use of that ability in the very same turn where we play Rishkar if we already had some creatures in play that aren't affected by summoning sickness. So that makes it very easy to cast multiple spells in the same turn. And our deck is primarily green, so we're just splashing a bit of white. So having access to a lot of green mana is definitely very beneficial. And then the last new addition from Jumpstart is Mikaeus of the Lunark. X and white for a legendary human cleric and enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it and then can tap to put a plus one plus one counter on himself and can also tap and remove a plus one plus one counter from himself to put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature we control. So it can be another way of placing a whole bunch of creatures on our team. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got some of the usual suspects. Of course, Conclave Mentor is the primary reason why we're dipping into white. Otherwise, we could just make it a mono green deck. Two mana, two, two, central cleric. And if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature we control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. And when the mentor dies, we also gain a bunch of life. Now important to note about Conclave Mentor is that the counter gets placed after any doubling happens from the branching evolution. So the counter we get from Mentor is unaffected by the branching evolution, just to make that clear. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck at one mana, we get access to Lenor Elves, definitely powerful addition from Historic, allowing us to potentially play branching evolution on turn 2, or maybe a Rishkar on turn 2. Then we've got the full play set of Pelt Collector, which also has great synergy in this deck as a 1 mana 1 1 Elf Warrior. And whenever a larger creature enters the battlefield under our control or dies, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Pelt Collector. And if it has 3 or more counters on it, it also gains Trample. So being able to follow up a Pelt Collector with a Conclave Mentor, we'll put 2 counters on the Collector, one from the Mentor being larger, and then one additional counter from the Mentor's ability. So that's also a very nice sequence. And then we've got Stone Coil Serpent, X in the casting cost and enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. And it also has Reach, Trample and Protection from Multicolored. Trample might be the most important keyword, since with cards like Branching Evolution we could end up with a huge Stone Coil Serpent. So we don't want the opponent to be able to just chum block it over and over. And then at two mana we've got our Conclave Mentor, one of copy of Mikaeus the Lunark. And then also the full place of the Wildwood Scourge, which we're often just going to play for X equals one. Enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, but then whenever one or more plus one counters are put on another non-Hydra creature we control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Wildwood Scourge. So that also gets affected by all the additional counters from the Conclave Mentor and from Branching Evolution. So the Scourge can get very large very quickly in this deck. And it doesn't come with Trample itself, but that's kind of fixed by including Vivian Arcbow Ranger in the deck, which can also place counters on our creatures and give them Trample. So that's also a great combo with our Wildwood Scourge. Then we've got our Branching Evolution, full playset of Rishkar, despite being legendary. If we play a second Rishkar, we can always decide to keep the original Rishkar if it already had a bunch of plus one plus one counters on it. But then we still get to make use of those two additional counters from the second Rishkar we played, which is still great. And then two copies of Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. Now it is triple green and we do have two planes in the mana base. So if we happen to draw all the planes alongside Yorvo, it can be a little awkward to cast. But of course we can also make use of the additional green mana from Lanor Elves 
and from Rishkar to help us cast Yorvo. And Yorvo enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it, so great synergy with Branching Evolution, as it will come into play with eight counters if we just have the one evolution in play. And whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Yorvo, which is also going to be affected by the Branching Evolution and Conclave Mentor. And then if that creature's power is somehow greater than Yorvo's power, we can put an additional plus one plus one counter on Yorvo, not going to happen very often, maybe if we play a giant Wildwood Scourge, if we have access to a lot of mana. And then finally we've got some Planeswalkers to help us mitigate sweeper effects against control decks. Three copies of Vivian Arcbow Ranger, amazing Planeswalker in this deck, as it can distribute two plus one plus one counters among up to two target creatures. And they also gain Trample until end of turn, so like we mentioned, great to give our Scourge Trample. Also great with Yorvo gaining Trample, and just being able to place two counters over and over that get doubled by Branching Evolution and get an additional counter from Conclave Mentor is great. And then Vivian also gives us access to removal, because otherwise our deck doesn't really interact all that much, so the minus three lets us deal damage equal to a creature's power to target creature or planeswalker, and then the minus five doesn't happen very often, but I did recently lose a game because I didn't bother to put a sideboard in my deck for Vivian, so we've got 15 one-offs that we can uh, search up with Vivian if the situation calls for it. And then we've got a one-off copy of a Johnny the Great Hearted, giving our entire team Vigilance, which can be quite synergistic with Rishkar, since we can potentially attack with our entire team, and then in our second main phase still tap all those creatures for mana to cast an additional spell. And then also great in any racing situation where we can play offense and defense, and the plus one can also gain us a bit of life against the burn decks. But of course the main reason why we're playing a Jani is the minus two, which can put a plus one plus one counter on the entire team, and a loyalty counter on each other planeswalker we control, so it can potentially synergize with Vivian as well. And then last but not least, two copies of the Great Henge, because our deck can be vulnerable to sweeper effects. We do have the Branching Evolution and the Planeswalkers that will stay in play, so those are nice, but having an actual card draw engine going in our favor is very important in those matchups, so that's where the Great Henge comes in handy. And with cards like Branching Evolution into a Scourge or a Stone Cold Serpent, or just playing a Yorvo, we can very quickly get a big creature in play, which makes it easy to play the Great Henge on a discount, costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, and then taps and double green, and also gains two life, and whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card, so also comes with plus one plus one counter synergy, which works very well with our Branching Evolution and Conclave Mentor. And then going over the mana base, we mentioned two basic planes. I did have four Fabled Passage, one basic planes in the deck before, but then I ended up drawing Fabled Passages in my opening hand too often, and that's kind of awkward since we do want to be curving out in this deck. And also one funny game where my opponent attacked with a Robber of the Ridge and managed to exile the one planes in my deck, and then I was stuck with three Conclave Mentors and a bunch of Fabled Passages now unable to search up the planes. So I just ended up adding the second planes to the deck and three Fabled Passages, and then ten Forests, four Temple Gardens and for some Petal Grove, another nice addition from Historic. And then I'll not spend too much time here going over the sideboard with Vivian, but we've got some of the usual suspects, Scavenging Ooze for some Graveyard Hate, Knight of Autumn can blow up artifacts and enchantments, Lieutenant can maybe protect us against the sweeper effects by turning our creatures into knights, we've got Questing Beast to take out Planeswalkers or maybe prevent any fog effects from uh, preventing damage, Shifting Ceratops, Uncounterable, alongside maybe the Allosaurus Shepherd, another new addition. Then uh, Biogenicus also has great synergy in the deck. Realm Cloak Giant if we need a sweeper. Thrag Tusk for a bit of life gain. Voracious Hydra can also be removal and has pretty good synergy in the deck as well. So we've got a bit of everything in the sideboard should it come up. One card that I didn't end up including as opposed to the standard build of this deck is Venerated Loxodon. Just because our deck is heavy green, Loxodon is much better if we have a lot of white creatures in the deck that can help us with the Convoke. And also we want to be attacking with our creatures in this deck. Our creatures can often be very large, so if we have to tap a Yorvo to help us with Convoke, it's kind of awkward. And Rishkar to an extent also fills a similar role to the Venerated Loxodon. And also once we add Branching Evolution to the deck, which is a 3 mana play that isn't a creature for Convoke purposes, then Eloxodon also felt a little bit slow and clunky in the deck, so I ended up cutting it. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Definitely gonna fetch up the forests, I've got Yorvo and Vivian in hand. Opponent does have the turn one elf. Let's 
So we could use an extra land here. Wild Growth Walker, a card I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, play another Mentor. Double Wild Growth Walker into Branch Walker. And they're gonna attack, we'll take it. Well, we've got options. Can just play Yorvo, which will play defense nicely. Could play Branching Evolution first. I don't hate the idea of Branching Evolution first. Just make this Yorvo absolutely massive. They've got five mana. And a Hydroid for three. Sure. Could play Scourge for one. Plus Elves. Yeah, I guess that's okay. And that way I can maybe play a Vivian next turn. Opponent is Sultai, so they are playing a bit of black. Maybe for casualties of war, which would be pretty devastating, destroying my enchantments. I think it's time for Vivian. My heart beats in unison with the wild. Could minus to take out Krasis, which is tempting. But I might be better off just plossing here. And then am I attacking with the Scourge this turn? Maybe I am. How you've grown. 12 12 trample. Mentor can play defense. And I uh, really hope they don't have a casualties of war, because that would be pretty back breaking here. As you can imagine. Attacks with all. Taking five. Seems fine. Maybe they have a fine finality to kill the Mentor here. But that would still leave them dead to the Scourge. Maybe they just want to escape Uro. Command the Dreadhorde. I see. Their opponent falls to five briefly. We might still be okay here. Great Henge, can play that for free. And then... Branching Evolution has to be better than Yorvo here. We're fit enough to survive. Tank with all. 24 powered a Wildwood Scourge. And her point explodes. Yeah, the power of Wildwood Scourge cannot be underestimated. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand.
Next turn, double Pelt Collector, probably just playing a Temple Guard untapped. Could also play Stone Coil for one, but it's better to play it to grow the Pelt Collectors on the following turn, I think. So let's see if this resolves. So up against the blue flash deck, it looks like. Fairy Vandal. Not a card you typically see. But they might be playing Curious Obsession, maybe Curiosity from Jumpstart as well. Which makes the Vandal better. Winged Words to draw two. Well, I could play Vivian, but I kind of like playing Stone Coil more here. Since it even blocks the Vandal. And then next turn we can maybe play Vivian. Brazen Borrower to bounce the Serpents. Mentor might get countered. A lofty Denial. And we'll play a 3-3 Serpents. Having good 1-drops is a nice way to beat the blue flash decks. Because early pressure is good against counter spells. Tempest Jin. Vandal attacks. And can I kill them here? Almost. Playing a 5-5 Stone Coil doesn't sound bad. And then the Pelt Collectors can attack. Alternatively, I can play Vivian. And plus... Nah, 5-5 five, five Stone Coil sounds better. And we've got two Reach creatures to block with. Favorable wins. Okay. And another one. Well, that was quite a turn of events. But I think they're still dead here. Just jump here. And Vivian's not even needed, so we can just attack with everyone and kill them. Alright, so we beat Mono Blue Flyers. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No white mana. Yeah, this is a little too awkward. And now we've got the double Sun Petal Grove, which is also quite awkward. But I guess we'll keep. And I'll let go of a Johnny. Turn one Gi to Lamp Runner. So a mono red wizard deck it looks like. Planes means I can play Scourge for two. Or I can play Branching Evolution first to make sure my creatures are big enough to maybe survive a burn spell. Take my beatings for a turn. Hope they don't have a Goblin Chain Whirler. If they did, they would have played it first, so I'll take it. It does hurt to take damage instead of just trading. But this Pelt Collector is going to get pretty large in a second here. And it also helps me grow the Scourge. And now I'm finally able to block.
trying to face. We're at five. I've got a few options. I think I just play Yorvo and then I might be able to just kill them next turn. Stay back, don't want to take any unnecessary damage. Next turn Vivian can plus. And there's a Chain Whirler. Alright, so if I Vivian plus, they both get two counters. And then Scourge gets another two counters because your voice is getting counters. So we'd end up with a 12-12 Scourge and a 10-10 Yurvo. Which is not quite enough to kill them in one attack. Which is unfortunate, so I guess we'll just have to Vivian minus and fight the Chain Whirler then. I am Scala's vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. Which is definitely better than uh, just playing an elf. And then next turn I could Vivian plus, play another Vivian plus and kill them. So hopefully we don't get burnt out. Another Chain Whirler will finish off Vivian. So once again they survive. And add another Lightning Strike to finish us off. Alright, it's too bad. Definitely very close to killing them despite being so far behind the entire game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a great opening hand. Lenor Elves into turn 2 evolution into... We'll have to see Scourge or Rishkar first. Typically want to get Scourge in play as soon as possible. But same can be said for a lot of cards. And if the Elf dies, we can just play Scourge for 1 instead. Hallowed Fountain untapped. Probably just an opt. If it's Spell Pierce, we do get punished for playing Evolution this turn. But I'm still gonna go for it. That was just nothing. And Pelt Collector is another nice addition. Can go Pelt Collector into Scourge for... 2 here. Or double Pelt Collector Scourge for 1 might be even better. If they bounce my evolution in response, I will be a little sad. Alright, not a bad turn. Grow Spiral, hopefully not into a Shatter the Sky. Can we kill our opponent if they don't interact here? Rishkar adds two counters to the Pelt Collectors, which in turn adds counters to the Scourge. Yeah, we're pretty close to lethal here. Opponent on a four-color deck, and Rejuvenator probably means Field of the Dead. All right, so they will be able to chum block Scourge, but the Pelt Collectors will have Trample at least. And my opponent concedes. Sweet, so they must not have had a sweeper in hand. And yeah, essentially a turn 4 kill, thanks to the early ramp from Lanoran Elves. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Elves to ramp us into a Vivian. Facing a Teamer Triome. Could play a 2 2 Serpent as well, which seems okay here. And an Emery. 
All right, so we're up against the Song of Creation combo deck. Well, this is just a pure race. Try and kill them as fast as possible. Maybe Vivian can get enchantment removal out of the sideboard in case they don't combo off entirely. Could also fight Emery with a minus here. I think I'm better off just plussing for now. My, my, how you've grown. Keep elves back to protect Vivian in case we want to use the minus five. All right, there's Song of Creation, so opponent's already going for it. There's a chance they fizzle, but it's not a very high chance. Witching well. That's kind of a good sign. Means they don't have more zeros in hand. They still have one additional land drop remaining. Plus, of course, they can have additional Mox Ambers. So killing Emery would have given me the best chance of my opponent not comboing off here. But if I keep Vivian to maybe kill the Song of Creation, if they do fizzle out, it gives me the best chance to actually win the game. So it was a tricky decision last turn. Because of course Emery can generate more mana with Mox Amber, which is what matters. Alright, opponent's got Underworld Breach. Not too many cards in the graveyard though. Not a witching well. All right, and our opponent fizzles out, discards their entire hand. Now they do have double witching well, which can still draw them a few additional cards. But uh, yeah, we're not dead, so that's great. What do I want to do next? Vivian could minus. Get an answer to Song of Creation. That's probably necessary here. So what's the cheapest answer? Probably... Night of Autumn. I guess I could also get a gem razor. Just double checking here. Scavenging ooze could be useful, but doesn't necessarily stop their combo. Yeah, I think I like Night of Autumn the most. Nature's so this has to destroy the song, and then I can still play Branching Evolution to set up for next turn. And a stone coil can attack. Now our opponent still has a few things going for them. They have Emery, which can get back artifacts from the graveyard. And they've got those uh, witching wells that they can sacrifice to draw more cards. Maybe find another song of creation. But yeah. Our opponent was kind of forced to go for it in a way. Because we had that Vivian, which kind of pressured them. But they didn't manage to completely combo off. So we're gonna scry first. And they're gonna pass a turn. Another stone coil. Let's play a Rishkar. 
And then I probably want to put as many counters on my trampler as possible. And I guess we can put one on the Knight of Autumn and then I'll tap a few of my creatures for mana too here to play additional stone coils. Yeah, this seems fine. And then we'll just attack with everyone here. And next turn we should have lethal. Draw two with Witching Well. Let's see if they have a Song of Creation. They do have a Mox Amber in the graveyard as well, which Emery can get back for one additional mana. So they could potentially still sack Witching Well and play Song of Creation. Alright, there it is. So our opponent has another shot at comboing off. If they find another Underworld Breach, it's going to be much more effective this time with a full graveyard. Yeah, it feels like they might get there this turn. They still haven't activated Emery. They can still draw with Witching Well. Metamized Prophecy is also an interesting inclusion. The way I approach the Song of Creation deck is just to kind of maximize on all the free spells and not bother with cards like Metamized Prophecy or Underworld Breach just to make it so you don't fizzle in the first place. And when I made the video, we didn't even have access to Tormod Script, still needed to play Rose Thorn Acolyte. Definitely want a full playset of Tormod Script. Maybe no room for the Rose Thorn anymore, although it was useful at sometimes just playing the Song of Creation on turn 4 if you only had 3 lands. But Tormal Script also an additional artifact for Emery. So that gained additional synergy as well. Opponent is down to six cards in library, so if they have a Thassa's Oracle, that should win them the game. Ooh, Underworld Breach. That's a little risky. They only have four cards remaining, no mana, but they hadn't played a land yet. Okay. So now they can go Mox Amber into Thassa's Oracle, and that should do it. With exactly zero cards left in library. Good game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Maybe we get to see Mikaeus in action. Yeah, I'm keeping. Pelt Collector into Mentor, into Mikaeus. Opponent on Mono Black. Rasp of Darkness. And since this gave the Mentor minus 4, minus 4, we didn't gain any life because last known information, Mentor didn't have any power. Yeah, we'll just play Mikaeus for 2 here, I think. And then next turn, Stone Cold for 4, we'll grow the Belt Collector as well.
Gifted Aetherborn, pretty good blocker, thanks to Death Touch. Another addition from Jumpstart. Ooh, Great Henge. So... Yeah, there's no way I can get Great Henge in play. I'll be one mana short. But definitely a great pickup for next turn. So, probably doesn't benefit me to attack here. Could have activated Mikaeus right away in case of another Grasp of Darkness taking out Serpent or Pelt Collector. Obliterator instead. That could be kind of a problem. So now we kind of have to go extra large with a Scourge with Trample going over the Obliterator to kill the opponent in one attack. Rishkar, alright. So if I remove counter from Mikaeus, I can play Henge into Rishkar. And then... I guess we'll put a counter on Rishkar himself, and one on Stone Coil. They probably can't attack with Obliterator. Demonic Embrace on Gifted Aetherborn is going to be pretty effective though. Although Stone Coil does have reach, so I could just trade. So, play another Rishkar, and we'll just keep the original, and put the counters on Mikaeus and probably Rishkar. So we have access to a ton of mana. Hench can draw me additional cards. Murder Sider takes out Stone Coil. So now the Gifted Aetherborn can start attacking. It's too bad. Back up Stone Coil. Yeah, I guess I'll make it pretty large here. I could make it as large as possible, although that might be a bit overkill. Let's see, eight. Because if I can make it large enough to kill my opponent in one attack, of course it's worth it, but we're not gonna get to that amount. So let's make it nine, nine. pass a turn. Once we find a Wildwood Scourge, Mikaeus can make it quite large. Opponent does have Castle for some card draw as well. Yeah, I don't think we're quite at the point where I can attack with everyone and kill them, but we're not too far off. Because most of our creatures do trample. And alright, opponent explodes. So we can take a look here. Let's say I had removed counters from Mikaeus. We've got 8, 5 is 13, plus 4 is 17, plus 11 is 28 power with trample. So maybe not quite lethal this turn, but we're getting close. 
and in the meantime Spawn of Mayhem is losing the opponent some life. If they want to activate Castle, that's going to cost them. And then if we ever find Vivian, we can maybe search up something out of the sideboard to make sure we can win the game on the spot. So yeah, definitely a game where the Great Henge played a very important role. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty good hand. Pelt Collector into Mentor into some more good stuff. Facing turn one Saracenans and the life gain deck. Alright, should be a fun matchup. Yeah, still playing Mentor. And then I might take a turn off playing Branching Evolution first. Drew another one. Could have attacked with Belt Collector and essentially traded for both of their creatures. Speaker of the Heavens. But Pelt Collector is going to be pretty key at growing the Wildwood Scourge as well here. I might just play another Branching Evolution. Since we don't have much going on other than the Scourge, so kind of need it to be as large as possible. And then if we ever draw Vivian, that's going to be amazing. Another Sarah Ascendance. At least my opponent's not at 27 yet, so they can't make any Angels. No Heliods or Soul Wardens, those are the scary cards here. Second Daxos just to gain a bunch of life. Opponent passes, alright, now we're in business. Seventeen, seventeen Scourge up to twenty-two, twenty-two. Could even attack with Belt Collector. Yeah, why not? Killing Daxus might be more important than Pride Mate here, because that's the source of all the life gain. Castle Ardenvale, not a bad answer to Scourge, although would have been even better with Daxo still in play. And our opponent explodes, alright, sweet. Next turn we can play Stone Coil for 5, and then times 4 plus 1, so 21 21 Stone Coil, which is gonna grow the Scourge even more. And then if we ever find a way to give the Scourge Trample, it's essentially game over. So yeah, opponent didn't have any Soul Wardens or any Heliots, which are kind of the key creatures for them to have in the matchup, so we were able to come out on top. I could see replacing the one copy of Ajani with a fourth copy of Vivian, since I wanted to draw Vivian in almost every game, giving the Scourge Trample is a big deal, but also just giving us a bit of interaction in matchups where we otherwise can't really get rid of a problematic creature is pretty important, so that's an easy change we can make. So the green-white plus one plus one counter deck, it's not going to take over the metagame or anything, but it's a fun casual deck that can definitely have some very explosive games with branching evolution. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.